What would you get if you took design inspiration from a bar of chocolate, a high-vis jacket, and you gave these elements to a Swiss watchmaker who's been manufacturing watches under their own name since 1959? Well, it might just be today's watch. Full disclosure, I don't actually know if the bar of chocolate and the high-vis jacket were the inspiration, probably not, but they are the colors we're working with today. And despite what you might think, it really works. The brand in question today is famous not just for manufacturing their own watches, but perhaps even more so for manufacturing fantastic cases. And they were selling them to other watch manufacturers, especially in the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. They were very prolific. Some of their customers included Blancpain, Doxa, Hoyer, amongst many more. Yes, you probably guessed it. Today, we are talking about Squally. I have stalked today's watch for literally years, and I've been waiting for the right moment and the right price to pick this one up. Up until this point, I'd never had a Squale watch in hand, I'd never owned one, and I had no brand experience. So I couldn't tell you much about what it's actually like to own a Squale. Today, that changes. So shall we have a look and see if the Squale is really any good? This is the Squally Matic Diver, and yes, as I mentioned in the introduction, it's brown, it's orange, it's black, and it's silver, and I think it comes together into a really beautiful package. I'll start off with some specs as always, then we'll look a bit closer at the watch and go through the pros and cons, of course. I've actually had this one for a little while now. I traded up from my Tosino Diver, put a bit of cash on it, and managed to secure this one used, but lightly used. So talking specs, this is a 44mm diameter case, it's got a thickness of 16mm and that includes the double dome sapphire there, 51mm is the lug to lug and it's a 22mm lug width. This one has a screw down crown, screw down case back, it's pretty much all 316L steel as you'd expect. Beating away inside of this one is the trusty Solita SW200-1. This is the elaborate grade, so 38 hour power reserve, usual stuff, 26 joules, runs well, pretty rock solid, reliable, Swiss movement, and easily serviceable with pretty much any half decent watchmaker. Bezel insert on this one is not ceramic. I thought it was as well. It's actually enameled steel, so that was something new for me. The loom is Super Luminova C3. We'll take a look at that a little bit later on. Something to point out on this one, when you see the bracelets in this video, it alternates between a shark mesh and uh, a finer Milanese mesh. These are both my own bracelets from my watch box. The watch came on a leather strap, which I'll show you later, but there's a reason why I haven't stuck with that. And I haven't purchased the Squale mesh because to be honest, it's really expensive and I'm not sure that I can justify the price that they're asking for it. Oh, and one more spec I almost forgot. This watch is 600 meters water resistant. It doesn't really look like it, but that's impressive engineering on the case. So looking a little bit closer at the Squale, you have this like sunburst chocolate colored dial, which I really dig. You might have seen my Proxima, which I've spoken about on the channel, which is also a chunky brown dialed dive watch. And that really piqued my attention and got me to appreciate brown dials and watches because for sure when I started collecting, I would have turned my nose up at a brown dial, but now I absolutely love them when they're done right. And this one is done right. You've got Squale twice on the dial, once as the watchmaker and once as the case maker around the bottom with the shark logo. If you see some of the vintage watches where Squale was the case maker, you will see the Squale shark and the sort of curved logo around the bottom there on other watches with the main brand at the top. So some people find it weird that Squale is twice on the dial. I think it's quite cool because of the historical significance on this one. The indices are highly polished. So on a sunny day, 
this one glistens, which is really nice. But you will notice the loom plots are a little bit smaller, and we'll come back to that. Of course, around the edge is the minute scale printed in white, and the date window at the three o'clock also with a white printed surround. When we talk about the hands on this watch, there's really only one place to start, and that is with that high-vis orange minutes hand. Now, this is really cool. First of all, it is really, really fluorescent. That's why I mentioned the high-vis jacket in the introduction to the video. And it serves a purpose because if you are going to be diving, the minutes hand is what you're timing your dive with. It's the all-important one, and it's great to see that highlighted in this watch. That's not to say that you can't see the hour hand, because you can, but full polish hand on a brown dial is not nearly half as legible as that minute hand. And the same with the seconds hand, it kind of blends in if you're not looking for it, which again is fine considering the purpose of this watch. Something nice, the chapter ring is a mirror finish, and this creates an interesting illusion of depth. I think it exaggerates the depth that is there, that combined with the double dome sapphire, the bezel insert is two-toned, so you've got black for the first half and then you've got that high-vis orange for the second half. Now this is a 60-click bezel today and of course it's a dive time bezel so it's only going to rotate one way, which is what you want if you're relying on it for your oxygen supply. The bezel action for me is pleasant enough. Yep, to be honest, the bezel feels good. Nice pronounced clicks, good action, it feels rigid, feels sturdy. There's a tiny bit of back play if you wiggle it around with your fingers, but it's not loose. Honestly, no complaints. Case finish on this one is a simple full polish. I seem to be on a roll with full polish at the moment. So positive, of course, is you can easily polish out with Cape Cod any scratches, but negative is fingerprints and scratches of course appear rife. The screw down crown is located at the four o'clock on this case and it is signed on this model. Also worth noting is the bezel can be removed by four lock screws so it won't easily be knocked off. I've seen this but only really on Breitlings before so that's a cool touch. There's not a huge amount to see on the screw down case back. Again mostly full polish, a small spec sheet and the Squale logo. It feels quite a simple case back and very much a part of a tool. And how does the watch wear? I've got to say on my 17 and a half centimeter wrist, it feels excellent. It reminds me of the Seiko Monster a little bit. That's also a large watch, but when you wear it, it doesn't feel large because it conforms to the wrist really nicely. Now I can't say that it would be the same for smaller wrists or bigger wrists, but I can tell you that the downturn on the lugs here seem to perfectly match the shape and the contour of my own wrist and I think that's partly why it's so comfortable. I can wear this watch for long periods of time and I don't feel any fatigue, I don't feel any sharp edges and I don't really want to take it off. Sorry to interrupt the review, it's a very quick one. Just a note to say if you're enjoying today's video, it takes quite a lot of time and effort for me to make these a good couple of weeks really just for a review. It's just me and a pocket camera. So if you like it, if you're enjoying it, it would mean the world to like and subscribe to the channel. And to all of my existing subscribers, thank you so much. You are a bunch of legends. Back to the review. In terms of Loom, although this is Superluminova C3, the dial is hugely disappointing. The hands, don't get me wrong, hours, minutes, seconds. I can read those all night and through to the next morning from a pitch black room. But the dial and the bezel mark at the 12 o'clock disappear so quickly it's really disappointing considering the expertise that Squale have in dive watches. How does it run on the time grapher? Well, plus 15, plus 14 seconds per day. It's a little bit high for my liking. Nice amplitude, low beat error. This one, I might pop the case back off and just give it a little bit of regulation myself just to pull it quite a bit closer down to zero. Considering the price of the watch, I think it could be a little bit better and it would be no harm just to regulate it even in one position. Okay, so on to the pros and cons. This one really does wear better than its size. And what I mean by this is that we're talking about 600 meter water resistant, 44 millimeter diameter watch that is super comfortable, 
conforms super well to the wrist and I barely even notice it's there over a long period of time and that, for something that's made out of stainless steel, I think that's really quite an achievement. And again, 600 meters of water resistance. I'm super impressed with this. Another positive is that the bezel would be really easy to turn in water with this one. The bezel slightly protrudes from the case at all angles and has a very nice knurling on it. And that means even with slippery, wet gloves, you're gonna be able to grip it and you're gonna be able to turn it. Again, a watch made for purpose is something that I really dig. It has a standout color scheme. I wouldn't have thought that chocolate and high-vis orange go together, but they do. I think the movement choice, despite the mediocre performance of mine, is the right choice for this price point. And a final positive is to say that the excellent AR coating on this one negates the natural issue of a lot of reflections that you tend to get with double dome sapphire. Still there, yes, but a lot less. We've seen the loom, and I just want to reiterate, when making such a good dive watch from a brand with so much history and so much experience of dive watches, I do think the loom application is disappointing. Next point is one that we hammer Seiko for, so let's hammer Squale for it as well. The bezel insert on mine is misaligned. It sits slightly to the right rather than bang on the 12. Next point is more to do with design continuity. I personally feel that a polished metallic frame around the date window would match the rest of the indices far better than the printed white box. The leather strap that I mentioned that came with this one, I don't think matches it at all. This strap introduces yet another color into a watch that I think is already on the limit for the amount of colors. And I know that's a bit rich of me having just reviewed the multicolored Mido, but decompression scales are something completely different. Feel free to check out that review if you're curious. And the final point, I just feel like a slightly bigger crown would be easier to grip. Don't get me wrong, I can operate this one, but where it's tucked into the case on the lower side and where the bezel protrudes as well, I find it a little bit difficult to unwind sometimes. I just think a bigger crown would have solved the issue. So I think that's everything on this Squale. At this point, I've got to apologize to you because my plan was when I filmed the video to tell you all about how, yes, the Squale is expensive, but if you wanted a taste of a deep sea diving brown dial, fear not because you could buy this Proxima for less than a couple of hundred bucks and it would probably satisfy the urge because it is a stunning dial and not everybody has the money for the Squale. I went onto AliExpress to grab the link and post it in the video description and I cannot find this watch anywhere so I apologize for that. I am trying my best to find cheaper alternatives. If you know of a more affordable brown dial diver, let me know in the comments because I couldn't find one yet. Yes or no, this is your last chance. Don't beat around the bush. In all honesty, I really, really like this watch and it's primarily down to the looks. I think it's such a unique piece. So I'm very grateful that I bought it and I'm grateful I got a good price. And I have positive things to say about Squale and my experience with the brand. I think there's a note of caution here, which is that the prices have been creeping up and Squale did increase the prices this year across their range. And right now it's not bad value or good value, I don't think. It's probably a fair price that they ask for. I think Squale just have to be careful that if they bump the prices up any more on their existing range, watches like this, it might be more difficult to recommend them because it's such a crowded market segment. I think the lack of regulation on the Salita movement and the relatively poor, I think, leather strap mean that the watch isn't perfect and it definitely doesn't offer the most value for money. But value for money really isn't going to bring you joy in watch collecting. It might make you feel better at the time of purchasing. But my take is it's all about how the watch makes you feel. And for that reason, I highly recommend this watch because it makes me feel great. But that's just my opinion. I'm just a guy on YouTube and as always, I encourage you to go out there, have a look at the watches for yourself, get hands on with them and see what you think. And of course, the comments section is the place to let me know exactly what you think. I try to reply to as many comments as I can, so don't hesitate to tell me for better or for worse. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope that I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.